Hello YouTube family, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita and in today's video, we are going to get into some holy grails of mine, okay? So these are not all of them, but I really wanted to condense this list down to like what I feel is the best of the best of the best of my perfume collection, ones that are just non-negotiables. I'd never want to be without them, okay? and I would probably have a heart attack if they stopped making any of these. And these are just ones that I feel like if you're newer to, you know, the niche world, start with these, okay? Because I just can't recommend them enough. Now, with that being said, <laughs> all five, when I say all five of these are very polarizing fragrances, I have come to know as I am on my fragrance journey that I really do um, love those polarizing scents, okay? And I don't want you to go out and blind buy these. Please test them. If you are feeling froggy and you want to leave, at least purchase from a retailer that will allow you to give returns or send returns, okay? Um, Saks Fifth Avenue, uh, No Haggle, No Hassle, uh, Bloomingdale's, um, Nordstrom. You know, go with someone that will take an open box of perfume back that you do not buy with. Now, to avoid the waste of that, because they cannot resell that after you've done that, sample, okay? All of these you can find decants for, um, ooh, with the exception of maybe one, it may be hard to get your hands on, but I'm still giving you some tips. But overall, I just think that these are the best of the best and they all perform, they all garner tons of compliments and these are just holy real fragrances for me, all right? So let's jump right into this video. Okay, so this first fragrance, I have not talked about in a while. She's been in retirement, but you know, after I rant and rave and rant and rave about a fragrance, I do like to retire them because I just feel like Y'all are probably like, girl, how many times are you gonna tell us about? But it's like, when I get excited about a fragrance, I can't help but to talk about it every third video because I really want y'all to understand me and hear me that you need to get your nose on this fragrance. So this one is back out of retirement, but when I say it's one of my top three, probably for life, and this is Scurso by Miller Harris. I recently uh, featured this in an empties video, but she's back in a 100 mil. And this is just such a unique fragrance and I do not want to be without this fragrance and you should definitely get your nose on it. You can get a sample from Miller Harris and I think they also have like the small travel sizes through Anthropology. I'll try to find everything and link it below, of course, as always. But this is a rose oud fragrance, okay? But get out of your head rose oud as you have come to know it through other fragrances because this one is truly unique and nothing else smells like this. At least I've never come across anything that smells like Skirto. So Skirto opens with Tangerine and Artemisia and I love, love, love the way the Artemisia comes across in this fragrance. You do have the Tangerine, but this does not come off as anything like super citrusy at the top. You do have something that I feel like wears quite linear. I don't get a vast difference, um, you know, in the scent from the opening to the dry down. Okay, so the middle notes have rose, olibanum, which is incense, uh, narcissus flower, and something called a pitosporum. I've never heard of it, okay? Could be lending to the extremely unique quality of this fragrance. And then in the base, you have oud, sweet notes, patchouli, and vanilla. So to me, the oud is there, but it is extremely clean. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, get your nose on a dirty oud and then you will understand that this is probably one of the cleanest smelling ouds that I have in my collection for sure and that I've come across. Very clean, Western nice oud, okay? <laughs> um, this is very, very, very sweet. I think you do have to enjoy sweet fragrances to like this. Rose is done, it's like a very dark, rich rose, but it's not, um, you know, some roses have like that lemony twang to it, like a, a like a Turkish rose. It's not a rose like that. I don't know what type of rose they use in here. If I were to guess, maybe Bulgarian, but I'm not sure. But it is very rosy, it's oody, 
and very sweet. And that is pretty much all she wrote. You do get a fresh spicy quality. Um, the patchouli is there, but it is not anything very um, screechy or, or loud or overtaking the fragrance at all. And I feel like if you are looking for a stunner, okay, one that garners compliments, a fragrance that is very unique and that will make you feel exquisite, then this is it. This is probably going to be a love or hate. All of these are probably going to be love or hate scents, but I feel like this is a really easy to like rose oud combination and very feminine. One thing I've learned is that if it's a oud, I need it sweet. Okay, this one is sweet, it is clean, it is addictive, and it is absolutely a 10 out of 10 a fragrance. And again, this is Skirt So by Milo Harris. All right, you guys, so this next one, y'all, when I tell you, I am so happy that this fragrance finally like exploded onto the scene because I feel like I was going on and on and on about Blanche Bet and it just wasn't getting the the just praise that it deserved and but you know what y'all listened and y'all was buying the dang thing up and y'all putting out the word and now it is it is very popular and i'm so so happy that so many of you all trust my recommendation and you tried it at least try this one this one is very like time if you look at the accords on fragrantica number one on the accord pyramid is like tonic so you have to like lactonic like, fragrances. That I feel like is not, is that's not negotiable. You have to like lactonics. Like, if you don't know if you like lactonic like, fragrance, please test this. You can get a travel size decant of this for under $20 or right at 20 bucks. So you can try it without a fear of it going left because it can go left. Milk notes, milk notes in particular can go quite sour on some people's skin, just depending on the body chemistry. I typically never get that from a milk note um, but never say never, okay? The next milk note to try, it might turn to sour milk on me or some, you know, some um, buttermilk, I don't know. But for this one, very smooth, creamy. It is, this is like inhaling clouds of sugar, vanilla, touches of cacao and white florals. Now, this has Jasmine tuberose, I always say this, I feel like they're equal parts to my nose, but some people get a more prominent tuberose. So if you are, like if you detest tuberose, again, tread lightly, try it. But I have found that some people that do not drive a tuberose still are obsessed with this fragrance. So it's very hard to describe. It's sweet, it's very heavy on the vanilla. My bottle over time, um, the juice has definitely darkened up because it was not at all an amber color when I got it. So if you get it and the color is different from mine, um, fear not, it just gets darker over time because it has a big dose of vanilla in this fragrance. This is a gourmand. It wears very, like I said, very fluffy and milky and creamy, um, musky, very ambrette heavy musky. And I think the ambrette in here is what makes it truly addictive. You have lots of fantasy notes in here. You have a mystical note. Don't know what that is supposed to smell like, but as always, I say it is giving me unicorn vibes, okay? This is a unicorn of a gourmand. <laughs> and those who love it, love it with all the passion of their heart and soul, I'm telling you. Uh, don't sleep on this one. If you are on the fence, just try it. You have nothing to lose by trying it but maybe $20 on a decan, okay? Um, this touched my skin and it was automatic, I need it. Never smell anything like it. And people compare this one to, um, what's the one by Killian? Rolling in Love. They're milky, but they're not, uh, okay, this, that's a reach to say that they're kind of, like this is very different from, well, at least to my nose, okay? Because I have both, I love both, but that one is giving me like this almond milk, white floral vibe and though this too is milk white floral there are just a lot of other components going on like i said i feel like part of the the real magic of this is the ambrette seed and the way it's done um there is a slight dusting of cacao but this does not come off as a chocolatey fragrance at all and they have mahonial. Mahonial is like a proprietary note and it's like a hodgepodge of different florals to give it a certain smell. So lots of molecular notes, which means the baby performs, okay? 
Nothing about this smells artificial. However, the sioche on this, this is not anything you put on and it's, oh, this is a loud beast. Like you're not gonna get that. But these particles, they, they get in the air and they just stand still. Because <laughs> people enter a room that you were in and you left 10 minutes ago, they're getting blanched back. Um, people enter a room, you're standing nowhere near them. They're automatically gonna comment who has on that magical smell. I've had that, you know, people have tracked me down hallways away, smelling the scent, following the sillage until they got to me and it was like, oh, that's you smelling like that. What is that? Write it on down for me. Magical, okay, mystical, unique gourmand like vanilla what more do i need to say if you ride with me you already know all right this is sharita in a bottle sharita in a bottle you need to try it all right again i've talked long enough this is the girl blanche bed by liquid imagineer okay so this next one we already knew she was gonna be on here okay if you don't like guidance i'm so sorry for you more guidance for us girls who love it i'm starting to see that this scent has grown on a lot of people that were not team guidance and I'm not surprised, okay? From the moment I blind bought it, the first day of release, I blind bought it. I don't know what I was thinking. This is Amouage, not a safe house to blind buy from ever. And how dare I get on here and say that because all three of my Amouages have been blind buys, but do better than me, be better than me, okay? Don't take the risk, sis. And I bought this from Amouage Direct which means there would not have been a return. I would have had to try to hawk it on Makari. Um, but boy, is this the best blind buy of my life. <laughs> Guidance is quite unique. And I find that your body chemistry is going to be the make or break for the scent. Like many scents, but definitely for certain scents that plays more of a factor. And some people get poop, some people get body odor. I don't get any of that. Um, I get a very spicy, creamy, fruity rose. So it has a, a very prominent Akigala wood note, and that is gonna be a note either you drive with or you don't. It's impossibilities on a 10 impossibilities. So if that is, it's a very addictive um, molecular note. And basically what it smells like, it's supposed to create the scent of wood is the, is the base. It's more woody than anything, woody, base with spice, like a peppery spice, and a very, very clean patchouli, okay? Those three components are what a Aki Gollywood is. <laughs> and so it is very distinct. It is very, like, you can't mistake this for nothing else. It smells like it here. You can pick it out in Balaya. You can pick it out in Possibilities. Um, Kamra, if you're familiar with that Middle Eastern fragrance, you can pick it out and it is so addictive to me and it is such a love and I can't get enough of it. However, you may absolutely hate it and it will break a scent for many. Now, other than that, it has incense. It's very incense-y. And ooh, I mean, nothing says sensuality to me, like rose, incense, and saffron. And then, and then, you have to nerve to make it sweet and effeminate? Sign me up, okay? The fruity component from this um, is going to be in from the Osmanthus, which is going to give you like an apricot vibe and it also has pear. So this is, you know, if you're new here, <laughs> I say this all the time from my favorite nose, perfumer Quentin Biche. Quentin also did La Belle, um, the perfume by Jean Paul Gaultier. So the way that pear, that sweet pear, almost like a poached pear, Oof, the pear comes across the same in here. It is very sweet, it's irresistible, it's feminine, and it is definitely a juxtaposition of different things. You have sweet, you have incense, you have the spicy saffron and ekigala wood, you have a beautiful, rich, deep, feminine rose. Um, it's just a lot. It is a lot, and it's not gonna be one for everybody. There's also a hazelnut in here that I get slightly in the opening, but some people get it throughout and it's off-putting because it comes off as a nutty fragrance, but not to me. I love this and it doesn't matter how polarizing it is, how many people hate it, I stand beside her. And when you love guidance, you love it. <laughs> like you love it and can't nobody take you different. This is the number one most complimented fragrance in my collection, y'all, let me tell you. I wore Hibiscus Mahajal to the Beyonce concert 
We know how that is a beast, okay? Sprayed myself down in hibiscus my hijab. My sister was given a decant five mil of guidance. That was her scent of the night for the Beyonce concert. All I could smell the entire night was guidance on her. I couldn't even smell my perfume. So when I tell you performance is on a 20 out of 10, people say they have washed this out of their clothes and guidance is still there. I don't just, I don't find it hard to believe. This fills a room, okay? If you are not one that can tolerate really um, big, loud, <laughs> really strongly projecting scents, okay? You may have to stick with two sprays behind the knees. <laughs> That's it. If you are not one that does not, you know, this is a very overwhelming scent. It is very strong, but I love scents like that. So this is a love for me, 10 out of 10 in every way, you know, complexity, uniqueness, um, performance, you know, longevity, um, just the scent profile. It is a 10 out of 10 in every way to me. Again, love it or hate it, but I'm here for it and I'm gonna stick beside her. And this is Goddess by the House of Amash. All right, so this next one is Blue Heart and this is from the House of Tamin. Completely obsessed with the saffron in this fragrance. O-M-G, O-M-G. So Blue Heart is very unique. You're gonna look at the notes and you're gonna say, okay, coconut, saffron. You may have an idea of what you think this is gonna smell like, you won't. <laughs> you won't have any idea because you have a coconut that is done very differently. It's almost like a drier coconut, not milky, not creamy, like a dry coconut flake. If you could imagine what, what inhaling that will smell like. You open a bag of dry coconut flakes, that's what you're gonna get. Okay, then you have almost like a Cipriol oil in here, which can come off as oody to some. As a matter of fact, Cipriol is what they use in a lot of fragrances that say, ooh, they don't have real oud. So it does have a very, you know, earthy, woody quality to it, but it doesn't smell like oud to me. It may come off oody to some, not to say flying by, okay? There is a sweetness to this that is from, you know, you have a very powdery vanilla orchid, um, Oh, and a very heady saffron. And this is sexy, it is musky, it is, you know, um, like a, like I said, earthy, a little powdery quality to it. And it lasts 10, 12 hours. It garners compliments, men seem to love this. Something about saffron, okay? It pulls the nose of a man to you, okay? Saffron, up in here, um, just, it, it commands attention. Very, very intoxicating, spicy, quality to that particular, to that particular, you know, um, note and spice. And it really shines in Blue Heart. So this one, some people, you know, put this in the summer category, no. Try your Blue Heart in fall and winter, and you are going to be blown away how it cuts through that cold, how it's, you know, it smells so beautiful in crisp air. I almost recommend this more for fall than I do for, for spring and summer, but this is one, that if you love Smell Unique all year and you love a musky fragrance, this is one I highly recommend and it is a 10 out of 10 and a holy grail for me. All right, you guys, last but not least, Angelique Noir. You absolutely knew there would be a vanilla on the list and oh my God, is Angelique Noir so special? People often ask me, Spirit Suisse, Double of Knee, Angelique Noir. Why are y'all trying to make me pick between my favorite children? Okay, I love them both. But if I had to pick one, I had to pick one, it would be Angelique Noir because it's more unique. Not saying that you're gonna go out and smell a bunch of things that smell like Spiritus Double Vanille, but this one is even more unique. And uh, like, please tell me something that you have smelled that smells like Angie. <laughs> the good girl Angie stands on her own two feet and she is sexy. It has a double dose of Angelica, so it does come off green. But for me, Angelica is a green note that is powdery, it's soft, and it's not sharp. It's not like a pedigree green. It's not, you know, it's not anything like that, but to, depending on your notes, because I'm not super sensitive to green notes, some people may get something overly green. Some people may get something like a cut grass in the opening. I don't get that. I get perfection from the top to the bottom, but, the Angelica does start to dissipate as it warms up and dries out on the skin because 
you're not getting the double dose after a while. You're just getting the angelica in the mid. So you do have gorgeous caraway seeds in there. You have a very juicy, delicious pear, and you have a very sexy vanilla. The vanilla is the star, please believe, but the way this sweetens up on your skin, the way the spices come through, the way it wears, it makes you feel the compliment factor. When a man compliments you on Angelique Noir, he's gonna screw up his face entirely. Girl, what? What is that? Like, I always get compliments as I approach. Like, people smell me coming. And it's not a loud beast, but it has a beautiful sillage, okay? To me, this has great performance. 10 hours on my skin and clothes, easy. I overspray most fragrances, keep that in mind. It's a love, it's a love, and it definitely performs better than Spirit 2 Stubble Vanille. You have to keep in mind that this house, you know, the whole thing behind it is natural material, so you're not gonna have just a bunch of molecular notes flying everywhere, making stuff last 16 hours. That's not the idea behind this particular line from Guerlain, but this is beautiful, it is elegant, it is exquisite, it is vanilla. It is, I cannot even put into words how beautiful this makes me feel and how beautiful it smells. If you can get your hands on it, Macari is, I feel like the best way to get a sample of it um, because good luck <laughs> getting one any other way. Finally, they are starting to carry it in the US. Um, you know, retailers such as Saxon Neiman's, call your local ones ahead of time, see if they actually have it on display. If so, pop in and test it. Ask your SA or sales associate if they can give you a decant to take with you. It is a love. You have to try this on skin though, not on paper, on skin. Um, it's sweet, it's perfection, and highly recommend this one. Again, this was Angelique Noir, Holy Grail for Life Vanilla for Me. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please drop me a comment below, honey. Let me know your holy grail scents. It can just be one or two. Honey, if you wanna share five with me, share all five, all right? So be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure notification bell is turned on to all. And last but not least, if you found any value in the content, please give me a big thumbs up as it helps the channel to grow. It has been real, I love you all YouTube, and I will catch you guys on the next one.